Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here. Today's video, I'm going to explain how one man's quest to discover telepathy ended up creating one of the greatest modern neuroscience tools we have to date, which is the EEG machine. Now, how did this all come about? Well, Hans Berger is the one who discovered it. He was a German man, and when he was 19 years old, he was training in the German military. And he ended up falling off his horse one day and had sustained bad injury, which isn't crazy in of itself, but Hans Berger got a telegraph from his sister around the same time saying that she was worried about him and she wanted to know if he was all right. Now, Hans Berger took that and he was like, wow, some way our brain waves must have traveled over this long distance and my sister was able to communicate with me and send me this, this warning message through the telegraph. And around this time, it didn't seem as crazy because this was when radio was just first invented. Because if you think about radio, guys, I don't even know how it works. It's just, it's magic. One of my favorite quotes is, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Now, this is around the radio era, and he was like, okay, so maybe this this is possible with brainwaves as well. Maybe that's how my sister knew that I was in trouble and she contacted me. So Hans Berger decided to devote his life to studying psychiatry and he was running experiments to try and discover how was this thought between me and my sister traveled across this crazy long distance? How did she know? After doing many, many different experiments, he was checking brain temperature. He was checking blood flow. And then finally he checked electricity. So he was able to record the electrical activity of the brain for the first time. And he was able to publish it in his findings on the electroencephalogram of man. That was his original paper that he published and discovered the EEG. Later in his life, Hans Berger wrote down that he realized these brain waves that he was recording, it was impossible for them to have traveled across such a far distance to reach his sister, and it wasn't exactly what he was looking for. He wasn't able to discover the secret of telepathy. Now that we're in the year 2023, it has been about a 100 years since the discovery of the EEG. Now, was Hans Berger onto something? Is telepathy possible now that a hundred years of innovation and technology have gone by? How does it look now? To answer that question, we have to go through the history of how human brains have been communicating with each other. So a couple million years ago, humans came into existence. Great. But we didn't have really any way of communicating with each other. And then 40,000 years ago, we had this amazing invention called language. It allows our brains to communicate with each other using our vocal cords. Great invention. And then after language, 40,000 years ago, now even closer to us, 6,000 years ago, was the invention of writing. Crazy invention, guys. The ancient Sumerians, I think that's the first place where they found writing. Humans were able to take their thoughts, their best ideas, write them down on little tablets, scrolls, paper now, and we are able to take all of our knowledge and leave it in a form that is able to stay around essentially forever and pass it on to future generations. This is what makes humans different from other species. We're able to take all of our best ideas and then share them with the rest of the tribe now that we can engrave our best thoughts in writing. Amazing. That was about 6,000 years ago. Then the printing press came out. And not only can we write down our best thoughts, we can duplicate them over and over again and share them with all of our friends. Amazing, guys. And then the telegraph came out, the telephone. Now we can talk with people with our vocal cords across long distances. Amazing. These are all great ways for our brains to communicate. Now that we're at the modern day, we have this smartphone thing. This is where we're at right now. What is going to 
replace the smartphone? How are brands going to communicate a hundred years from now? Are we still going to be talking on our iPhones a hundred years from now? Probably not. I can tell you guys what I think is going to happen. What is going to replace our phones is something that Hans Berger was trying to discover. Essentially, telepathy, guys. How is it going to work? Let me get into that. Well, it's not going to be done through an EEG because an EEG has electrodes that are recording the brain on the scalp. The EEG electrodes, they have to go through many layers of skin. They have to go through the skull. And you're not really recording individual neurons. You're, you're recording groups of millions of neurons. It's kind of like trying to record music coming from a house party but you're standing outside of the house. You're locked out of the house. So that's it's not going to really work for something as advanced as telepathy, guys. So we're going to have to bypass that somehow and get into the skull, implant electrodes inside of the brain so we can get a much higher definition signal. And scientists are already doing that. We do it for epilepsy patients to localize the seizure onset zone for patients who are preparing for epilepsy surgery. Also, patients who have disabilities like quadriplegia, if they're unable to move any of their limbs, they can implant electrodes and allow the person to control a little computer cursor with their thoughts. Very interesting invention. Also, there's a invention where Blind people are able to have a crude version of vision with electrodes implanted in the visual cortex, which is in the back of your head. So they'd have a glasses with a camera on them. The camera takes in the information from the outside world. And then the electrodes stimulate areas of the visual cortex to make it look like to a blind person, little dots of light would be like the outlines of, let's say you're looking at a car, it would be a bunch of little light dots that look like the car. So it's not a perfect version of vision, but these are the early prototypes of what is called a brain-computer interface. Now this could also hypothetically be used to accomplish Hans Berger's dream of telepathy. Now, Hans Berger, back in 1924, there was no computers, guys. So his dream of telepathy was 100% impossible back then. And he was a little upset. But maybe we can accomplish his dream. But it's going to take many electrodes to be implanted in the brain. And probably at least a million. Right now we're at a maximum of 1,000. And... Why is that so difficult? Well, it'd take a long time to implant a million electrodes for one. For two, they would have to be extremely small. How are you gonna put a million electrodes in the size of a human head? Number three, when you put something in the brain, the body's naturally gonna have an immune response and start to attack it. So even if you put a million electrodes in there, the body's natural immune response would be like, okay, outside foreign object, let's kill it, get rid of it. So th there's that as well. And well, how would it work? So both people would have to have electrodes implanted in their brain and they would be able to communicate at the speed of thought. This is going to be the new iPhone. But if we look at the pace of innovation of how many electrode scientists are able to put in people's brain, Right now it's at a thousand, and if you extrapolate out in the future, we're not gonna hit a million electrodes put in someone's brain until at least the year 2100. And I don't know if uh, we're really gonna be around then, so we have to hurry up the pace of innovation, and hopefully one day we can realize Hans Berger's dream of telepathy. Very exciting, very exciting. So this is the kind of stuff that I think about, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. I appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all on the next video.